Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So I'm finally getting around to sewing my Anna Allen Persephone pants. I've been sitting on this pattern for such a long time and I finally decided to do it and so I just wanted to film a little video to show you a bit of my sewing process and also do a review of the pattern if this is something that you're interested in making yourself. Um, this isn't going to be a full sew along or tutorial on how to make these pants because I don't own the pattern, um, but I will be sharing a bit of the process, any alterations or changes that I make, and just my general tips along the way. So I hope you enjoy it and let's get into it. So I'm starting by piecing together my pattern. Um, I always print out my patterns at Staples and then I have to piece them together at home. And this is by far the most tedious part. And my pattern pieces always somehow end up a little bit skewed as much as I try to line them up properly. <laughs> But once it's all fully put together, I also like to trace over the pieces I need um, with my tracing paper. That way I'm not cutting my printed pattern in case I want to change sizes later on. And I also just feel like the tracing paper is just cleaner. Um, it means I don't have to deal with cut up and taped pieces of pattern. Um, it's an extra step, but once it's done, it's done. And then I can hang on to the pattern and continue using it in the future. So for fabric for this one, I went with two meters of hemp organic cotton canvas from Earth Indigo, which is a Canadian fabric store. It's in the color called Forest Night. And I was actually expecting more of like a forest green color based on the photos on the website. But when it arrived, it was actually this quite dark olive color. Um, but this worked out in my favor because I had recently purchased a pair of the Alia Wanek Indra pants in the color olive. And then when those came, they were more of a forest green color. <laughs> um, so two happy accidents meant that I didn't end up with two very similar pairs of pants. And then for the pocket lining, I also ordered a lightweight striped cotton, um, also from Earth Indigo. And this is just a quarter of a meter, which you will only use a little bit of. Um, so I'll just keep the rest in my stash for future projects. For this pattern, I cut a size 10 based on my measurements, which is the same size I have done in the Pomona pants before, which are also by Anna Allen. Um, and I went more by my hip measurement. Uh, this was just my first time doing a pair of tailored or like more fitted pants, and I definitely didn't want them to be too small. And then to mark all of my darts and holes, etc., I normally use either fabric chalk or this carbon paper and tracing wheel. Um, and this is all vintage passed down to me by my mom, so it's just really cool. Um, and to use this, you just place the paper around your fabric, and it helps to choose a contrasting color so that it actually shows up. And then you run the tracing wheel over your dart or whatever it is, and it transfers onto your fabric. So here I am pulling out my machines. I sew on our kitchen table slash island, and I keep all of my sewing supplies in the closet in our spare bedroom or office when I'm not using them. It's not the best setup, and I definitely dream one day of having my own sewing room, but for now it works, and I can't really complain. For my thread, because the color of the fabric ended up being a bit different than I initially thought, I didn't actually have a good match for it in my stash. Um, a lot of my thread spools were handed down to me from my mom when she gave me her machine, so I just kind of relied on those and assumed I'll have something that works for any given project, but this time I was kind of out of luck. I tested a few and then ended up choosing this dark brown color, um, and I ended up really liking it because it doesn't stand out too much, but it adds just a little bit of complementary detail, so I think it ended up being the perfect choice. And then for serger thread, I had picked up some green spools, but they were, again, just so different than what I expected. So I decided to stick with black just because it was already on my machine and it was threaded and it's just a lot easier that way. And then for buttons, I picked up a jeans button kit from Blackbird Fabrics. And I think this is the color Antique Bronze or Antique Brass. And I ended up really liking how the color looked with my fabric. It came with five smaller buttons, two larger buttons, and some rivets. So I didn't end up using everything, and I'll just keep the rest for future projects. And finally, we're ready to start sewing. I always hang on to some fabric scraps from cutting just to use to test my machines and make sure that they're threaded properly. So that's what I'm doing here. And then after that, I can get started with actually sewing. I'd say that most of the time constructing these pants was actually spent on the button fly. Um, so here I am sewing my buttonholes. And the way I do this is I use the buttonhole foot on my machine and just make sure it's set to a length that's a little bit longer than the width of my button. And then I just follow the four steps on my machine. Um, my machine doesn't have an automatic setting, so I just need to change it for each step. And then to clip the buttonholes, I just fold them in half and clip a very small hole with my scissors and then use my stitch and picker to do the rest. And after the first one, I always like to test that my button actually goes through properly before moving on to doing the next ones. And here we have a completed button fly. 
this was something I'd never done before and this is I think the main reason why I was intimidated by this pattern um, but the instructions are very detailed and thorough so it really wasn't that bad it was just a lot of small little steps I did end up making one mistake where the instructions weren't super clear and clipped something I wasn't supposed to but it wasn't the end of the world and now I know for next time so once the button fly was pretty much done it was onto the inseam and I just stitched that and then tried the pants on just to make sure that I was happy with the fit and I would definitely recommend for any sewing project that you try on your piece regularly just to make sure it's fitting the way you want. It's so much easier to alter them on the fly than it is to change something after the fact once it's all finished. Luckily for me, these were fitting great, so I went on to finish the seams. And can I just say that I absolutely love my serger. <laughs> it's like the best thing. It's so satisfying to use, especially when it cuts off all the raggedy edging and threads that have come loose on the raw edge if you, as you've been sewing. And it just adds a really professional finish to any garment. I know they're super expensive, and I was really lucky that my mom gave me hers, but I do still think if you really enjoy sewing and you do it a lot, then it's definitely worth it. So now those seams are all finished, and I was so happy that I got my crotch seams to line up perfectly. That almost never happens for me. And the final part of doing the seams is top stitching them down. Um, you don't have to do this, but it's in the instructions, and I do think it adds a really nice detail to the pants. But it's definitely a tough step to do just because your side seams are already attached, so you're basically sewing down the leg in a long tube. Um, so my tips for this are really just to take it in small steps and keep pulling your fabric apart as you continue down the leg and just use your fingertips to kind of feel underneath and make sure that there's no puckers and that none of the other fabric is caught under where you're sewing. So onto the pockets, I had never done welt pockets before but the instructions were really easy to follow I thought and I do sort of wish I'd gone for a darker lining fabric as it peeks out just the tiniest bit on the top. Um, I could have done a better job of edge stitching but oh well, I at least know for next time. And for the belt loops or the carriers, I ended up doing a small adjustment here and cutting the strip slightly wider than the pattern. And then instead of finishing the edges, I folded both of the edges into the middle and then folded it in half again. So I basically made a long strip of bias tape, um, except that it's cut on the grain instead of diagonally. So then I top stitched down both sides and that way all my raw edges were enclosed. Um, this is a lot of fabric folded up together, so especially if you're using a heavier fabric, it can be hard to stitch through all those layers when you're attaching them. So just be wary of that and make sure that you're using your denim or a heavy duty needle on your sewing machine, which is something I actually forgot to do <laughs> until I was almost done sewing, but my machine handled it like an absolute champ and I actually had no issues. Um, another small adjustment I made here is on the waistband. So the instructions say to do a second row of top stitching um, a quarter inch away from the edge stitching, but after that I was done I just didn't like the look of it and it just felt too busy. So I ended up unpicking it and just leaving the edge stitching on its own, which in my opinion looks a bit cleaner and I just liked it better. So after that I'm attaching the buttons and I marked each spot with a pin and then used my stitch unpicker to make a small hole which I then pushed the back of the button through, and then I hammered the pieces together on a hard surface, and voila, we have a button-up fly. After that, all I had to do was the hem. Um, my normal hem is to fold up 3 eighths of an inch followed by one inch, but for this one I decided to do one and a half inches on the second step just for a slightly wider hem. I felt like it suited the style of the pants more, and also it just worked out lengthwise. And as you can see, I feel like I'm looking a little haggard towards the end here. <laughs> um, sewing is just a lot of work and hemming is my least favorite part because by the time I get to that step, I always just want to be done and finished. Um, but anyway, after that, my Persephone pants were pretty much done. So here they are on. Um, I just put them on first with a basic white tee to kind of show you the fit. And I actually love how these turned out. I can't believe that I was able to make a pair of pants like this, to be honest. They look like real pants, <laughs> and by that I mean ones that you'd buy. Um, they just don't look handmade to me, and I think a pair of pants like this is really expensive. So, for example, a similar style um, from Jessie Cam runs you at least a few hundred dollars, whereas All In with the fabric and notions for this one, I think I was still under a hundred dollars. Um, which obviously doesn't include other investments like my machines and other sewing supplies, but still, I mean, I think that's pretty good. Overall, they fit pretty well. Um, my measurements are a little bit different than the size chart, so I went by my hip measurement, and my waist is 29 inches, and my hips are between 41 to 42 inches, 
So my proportions are just a little different and my waist is smaller while my hips are bigger. So it's a little loose. Um, in the future I should probably grade that down a size, but I actually like that they're not too tight and because the fabric is a lighter weight, they are just so comfortable. Um, the pattern called for a 10 ounce fabric and I think this is a seven or eight ounce. Um, so yeah, they're just light, comfortable. I also think that the lighter weight fabric was a good choice for my first run at this pattern because it's a little more forgiving and not as stiff, so there was a little more room for error. But yeah, at the end of the day, overall, I really enjoyed this pattern and I loved the fact that it taught me some new techniques like how to do a button fly, um, welt pockets, and a waistband with belt loops. So I definitely recommend checking it out if you're interested. I will link to Anna Allen's patterns in the description box below. Um, I've already done her Pomona pants twice and I really enjoyed those ones as well, so definitely check all of her patterns out. I can't recommend her patterns enough and the attention to detail in them and the thoroughness of the instructions is always just on point. Um, I also forgot to add my label from Kylie and the Machine while I was doing the waistband, so I had to stitch it on after the fact and the stitches can be seen from the back, but it's not a huge deal and I still love adding a label on pieces like this just as a little final touch. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to like it and subscribe if you'd like to see more in the future. And also let me know in the comments if this type of sewing kind of sew along video review is something that you'd like to see more of as well. Um, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.